Is now the worst time to visit New York City? With an increase in crime, prices, and COVID-related issues, we've got a lot to discuss. There seems to be a cloud of negativity just hanging over the Big Apple at the moment, and I wanted to make this video geared towards tourists who may be seeing all of this news and publicity surrounding New York, and believe me, there has been a ton of it. When I recorded this video, it was a few days before the mass shooting incident on April 12th in the Brooklyn subway. And uh, I want to send, first and foremost, my thoughts and prayers to all the victims and their families of that gruesome event, which I'm not going to share any more photos or videos of it because I'm sure you guys have uh, seen quite enough of it. And, you know, it hits close to home because I have ridden that exact line through those exact stations many times before. And I know that Mayor Adams has said he's going to double down on police presence in the subways going forward. He's considering adding metal detectors, all sorts of stuff. Things have to change. And if you're watching this and you feel too afraid to take the subway right now, I won't judge you for it. Uh, I'm going to continue taking the subway though because I'm not going to let the actions of one deranged individual you know, change me from living my life and I'm really proud to be a New Yorker right now seeing the actions of my you know, fellow citizens here in helping the wounded and was probably the scariest moment of their lives. We'll start with the one issue that has plagued New York City for the last two years and has affected tourism more than anything as COVID-19. The only thing that I could think of that's still closed due to COVID is going to the crown of the Statue of Liberty. Now you still need a negative COVID test within 24 hours of entering the United States from abroad as well as vaccination proof. That is likely to change soon, but every time I think something's gonna go away, we get an increase. According to the New York Times tracker, we have seen a 50% uptick in COVID-19 cases in the last two weeks due to the Omicron B2 variant. The fact is hospitalizations aren't going up and that is the best news. And that is why I don't think we're gonna see any new restrictions that will affect locals or tourists. Now, one thing that was keeping many travelers away from New York City was the vaccine mandate, particularly for children. I had a lot of European viewers who were sending me DMs that they didn't know what they were going to do with their kids because they couldn't eat indoors at restaurants or go to any of the attractions. That has since been abolished as of last month. Masks are a different story. Take my supermarket in Brooklyn, my laundromat in Brooklyn. They still have a sign requiring masks to enter and this is up to the discretion of local businesses. But for most of the tourist attractions, that's not even a thing anymore. I see tons of pictures from Summit OV, which is my favorite new attraction in New York and you do not need a mask to even enter. COVID-19 probably isn't gonna hinder you that much from visiting New York City anymore, bearing any huge outbreaks. I'm expecting this summer to be very busy in the Big Apple. Speaking of summer prices, I put in a one week stretch in late July to stay in the Times Square area and the cheapest hotel came to $200 a night after fees. And an important thing to do as a tourist when you're looking up hotel prices in New York City is to factor in those fees because it's starting to become like Las Vegas here. These resort fees are popping up all over and it's going to increase the price per night like you wouldn't believe. Now the good news is you don't have to stay in Midtown Manhattan to have a good trip. Hint, hint, Brooklyn or Queens. In fact, I did an entire video on this topic on the channel about how to find the best rates on hotels, so definitely check it out when you get a chance. If you haven't visited New York in a few years, you're going to notice some changes in prices. One of the saddest is how dollar pizza is going away slowly but surely, raising the prices to $1.25, $2 a slice. You'll notice at restaurants that prices are higher, cost of beer is higher. This is a nationwide issue. It's gonna cost you more money to travel to New York in 2022 than it did in 2019. That's a fact. All right, deep breath. We're gonna talk about crime. And judging on the amount of views that my last video on this topic garnered, 
It's an issue that many of you care deeply about, and we're gonna gear this conversation towards tourists. I'm all about statistics, and the good news is murders are down. The bad news is every other crime statistic is up in 2022 compared to 2021. But we've got to take a step back here. I was rightfully called out in my last video for making a very big deal about a one-year jump in crime stats because we were coming off one of the best periods in New York City history of low crime in a five-year period. As a tourist, though, I don't think a 40% raise in larceny is really going to affect you because shoplifting is out of control right now, you're more concerned about a random assault or being robbed. I get that. The problem here is that the media is going to report the outliers of cases, the random subway slashing or somebody getting punched out of nowhere on the street. These things happen. You should be aware of them, but they're exceptionally rare. What you're going to actually see more often in your one week in the Big Apple, people jumping the turnstiles without paying, a mentally ill person on the subway cursing, maybe if you're really unlucky, cursing in your direction. And yes, crime is up in every single precinct in New York City, but the reality is the majority of crimes are still being committed in neighborhoods that tourists aren't gonna visit. Instead of scaring you with tons of stats, which you can look up on your own, or the many stories that are out there, why don't I give you some actionable advice that you can use on your trip? A big one is your camera, because everybody has a phone these days, you're gonna be filming random things, you might even be making a YouTube video, who knows? I was with my camera guy, Ben, about a month ago, and we were walking in the Lower East Side. Now, Ben does have a big camera, he wasn't even recording, and some random guy got in his face, angry, saying, are you filming me? What are you doing? The guy clearly was either on drugs or had mental issues. I had to pull Ben out of there and we walked away from the situation unscathed, but it was a scary moment. Remember, if you're in the wrong place the wrong time and you're recording your friends for TikTok, somebody could take offense to something as innocent as that. So just be mindful of it. And if someone confronts you about it, just walk away, please. Here's some good news for you. A lot of the major touristy areas like Midtown, like Times Square, they have absolutely huge police presence. You don't often hear of a random tourist getting assaulted in Times Square. It can happen, but it's not common. I am pushing you to be the most alert as a tourist are the subways. Look, I won't even allow my wife to take the subway by herself after 11 p.m. So for my solo female travelers watching this video, I recommend the same for you. And the subway in general can still be a crazy place, especially if you're not used to New York City. So be aware of your surroundings. And I always say this, if somebody's acting unstable in your subway car, at the next stop, get out and move on to another subway car. New York's not having its best moment right now with crime, and many are pointing fingers at Governor Kathy Hochul and the bail reform laws and a lot of offenders getting released right away. She has proposed some changes. The proposals will close loopholes in the raise the age law to hold more defendants under 18 accountable and target repeat offenders who would not have been jailed under the 2019 soft on crime reforms. We are now for the first time going to allow judges to set bail for gun charges that were previously subject only to release. We're also going to be looking at the bail and arrest eligibility for repeat offenders in any crimes, repeat offenses with harm to a person or property, repeat offenses for property theft with limited exceptions for crimes of poverty, close a desk appearance loophole which exists right now. It's an election year and Governor Hochul knows that if the crime stats don't go down, she's gonna be in trouble from her opponents. Now remember, these are just proposals right now. Are these changes gonna pass? Will crime go down? Only time will tell, and you can only hope that it does, and that this is just a cycle in New York City's history. I'd be lying to you if I said I feel safer in New York City in 2022 than I did back in 2019. And there's a lot of factors behind this. It's the laws. COVID-19, many things have just come together and have created 
This current issue that the city is going through, I have talked to some of my viewers, most of them had no incident. Many did mention seeing more homeless, seeing more mentally ill on the subway, and that is unfortunately true. And you've got a local population that's absolutely tired of hearing about the crime statistics going up. So where does that leave you? Visiting New York right now is challenging, but I wouldn't recommend canceling your trip because the city needs you right now. And what better way to help New York get back on track and to pour in some tourism dollars and show the city that you support it. Now, if you want to avoid some first timer mistakes when you visit New York, why don't you listen to some fellow tourists who share their biggest regrets, their biggest mistakes on their first trip. I promise you'll learn a lot watching this video right here.